truth be told, films resorting to computer-generated imagery look fantastic and more realistic over time. However, there is no denying that practical effects are still in demand today. So before we go further into our video, it is imperative on our part to know what the practical effects are. Also known as special effects, practical effects are produced physically without the help of any computer-generated imagery, or, say, any other post-production techniques for that matter. Well, this brings us to the world of science fiction, which, to be honest, is pretty intense if you ask us, and often packed with concepts that are not entirely believable. Enter practical effects, which keep most of the movies grounded in scientific realism along with rational narratives. And let's not disregard a horde of some beautifully bizarre, dangerous, yet memorable creations. In today's video, we will make you explore the riveting world of 14 science fiction flicks, each featuring amazing practical effects that look too good to be real. Mind you, if you happen to be someone who is a bit sensitive to visual vandalism, some of the movies mentioned in this list might not be for you. But hey, they were certainly way ahead of their time. Well, without further ado, let's dive right into the video then. But before we get into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you enjoy our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. The Thing 1982 Did you know that The Thing happens to be John Carpenter's personal favorite movie? One that is based on John W. Campbell's science fiction horror novel, Who Goes There? Lauded as a cult classic in the horror genre today, and backed by a screenplay by the late Bill Lancaster, the storyline has a research team sent to Antarctica who stumble upon an extraterrestrial form of life. Or in other words, the shape-shifting thing that can not only assimilate, but also imitate other organisms, which means it can take over the bodies of its victim. Upon the realization that every part of the thing is an individual form of life with its own survival instinct, the research team becomes highly paranoid, so much so that they go to the whole extent of taking exceeding measures so as to not let the shape-shifting telepathic alien escape from there, even if doing that comes at the very cost of their lives. Special makeup effects creator Rob Bettine was only 22 years years old when he collaborated with Carpenter for The Thing, and full credit goes to Bettine for being the one responsible for the jaw-dropping creature effects as seen in the movie. Bettine was highly praised for his impeccable work, with sequences such as the chest chomp scene and the severed head scene becoming the signature high points of the film. It is only fitting that Bettine was addressed by the reviewers back then as the master of the macabre, and it is safe to say that he makes the flick look just as good today as it did back in 1982. The Terminator, 1984. James Cameron's The Terminator follows Arnold Schwarzenegger as an indestructible cyborg assassin, aka the eponymous Terminator, who is sent back in time to locate and execute Sarah Connor, whose unborn son is destined to save humankind from getting annihilated by the hostile artificial intelligence Skynet in the post-apocalyptic future. While The Terminator is completing 40 years this October, this movie is to date recognized as the one that made a significant break breakthrough for science fiction flicks. One of the primary things that categorically make this film the best of the best in its genre is the special effects on display, followed by the non-stop explosive action. Designed by the late legendary Stan Winston, the metal endoskeleton of the Terminator is a perfect example of the iconic practical effects that looked certainly realistic and, let's not disregard, way too creepy even back in 1984. Remember the iconic sequence that had the Terminator's flesh burned and his robotic endoskeleton disclosed in the process? Well, that particular effect was pulled off by using a specially constructed endoskeleton suit and pyrotechnics. Also, you'll be surprised to learn that the prosthetic model of Arnold Schwarzenegger's face took about six months to create. E.T. 
The Extraterrestrial, 1982 Steven Spielberg is living proof of the fact that even an ugly-looking extraterrestrial creature can win over not only the hearts but also the minds of the audience. Backed by a touching screenplay by Melissa Matheson, the plotline follows a young boy named Elliot, who discovers an alien in the backyard of his family home. He dubs the alien E.T., and learns that the latter was left behind on Earth when he separated from his group after becoming intrigued by the distant city lights. What follows next is Elliot befriending the alien and going to extreme lengths to help E.T. find his way back home. While it is true that the animatronics for the film were designed by the late Italian special effects artist Carlo Rambaldi, the whole idea of the movie was based on an imaginary friend Spielberg had created after his parents' divorce. Believe us when we tell you that this flick here is bound to make you all tear up, and it does not matter if you are a child or an adult. The movie will have the same impact on you, which of course would not have been possible if the eponymous character on display wasn't that convincing in the first place. Surprisingly, the more you watch this movie, the more the titular character becomes personal and authentic, rather than just a mere creation. While the kitchen sequences in particular were done using a 12-year-old boy who was born without legs, but was otherwise an expert when it came to walking with his hands, the majority of the full-body puppetry was done by a 2-foot, 10-inch tall stuntman. Also, we are pretty sure you did not know this, but the face of E.T. was a fusion of Albert Einstein, Carl Sandburg, and a pug. You may Google them and see them for yourself. <laughs> you think this is the real Quaid? It is. Total Recall, 1990. Paul Verhoeven's hit sci-fi action film has construction worker Douglas Quaid haunted by a repetitive dream about a journey to Mars. In the hopes of knowing more about his dream, Quaid visits Recall, a company that is known for selling implanted memories of virtual vacations. Quaid chooses a fancy adventure on Mars, where he is a Marshall secret agent. However, things go wrong with the memory implantation, and Quaid remembers not only being a secret agent, but also his attempts to stop the Martian dictator's oppressive regime. What follows is a roller coaster ride, and the question remains whether Quaid can differentiate between what is real and what is not at the end of the day. Given that Verhoeven's Total Recall boasts a tagline that states, how would you know if someone stole your mind? It is evident that the film is packed with practical effects, and rather impressive ones if you ask us. It is almost like with Total Recall, Verhoeven has literally embraced the world of special effects with sophisticated prosthetics, animatronics, and whatnot. Also, when you have Rob Bettine responsible for the creature effects, and in this case, the mutants to be more precise, you know for a fact that things are bound to be interesting. The effects that brought this movie to life were pretty revolutionary given the time period, and while many today can point towards the effects and call them dated, there is no denying that they were a masterwork of their time. Jurassic Park 1993. The first installment in the Jurassic Park franchise is based on Michael Crichton's 1990 science fiction novel, also titled Jurassic Park. With a screenplay by Crichton and David Kep, Steven Spielberg's 1993 blockbuster hit is set on the fictional tropical island of Isla Nublar, where wealthy industrialist John Hammond and his team of genetic scientists have created a theme park of cloned dinosaurs known as Jurassic Park. However, the joyride at the Wildlife Amusement Park soon becomes a horrifying experience for a small group of visitors when a power breakdown afflicts the park and the dinosaurs break free. Remember the Tyrannosaurus Rex paddock scene in the movie? If that does not look real to you and makes you almost crap in your pants, we don't know what else would. Of course, it is a different thing that the infamous roar of the T-Rex was a mixture of a tiger's snarl, a baby elephant's squeal, an alligator's gurgle, and the sound of a dog and a penguin, for that matter. That is quite the bunch, right? Well, Spielberg did rope in Hollywood's best effects supervisor. For instance, Stan Winston was brought in to 
create the animatronic dinosaurs. Phil Tippett was in charge of creating go motion dinosaurs for long shots. Michael Lantieri was to supervise the onset effects. Dennis Murin was responsible for the digital compositing. And lastly, paleontologist Jack Horner was accountable for supervising the designs and aiding Spielberg so that the dinosaurs appeared more as animals and not as monsters. That's not all. Prepare to be astonished even further when we tell you that almost all of the dinosaurs featured in the flick are examples of impressive practical effects thereby making every bit of the film look as gripping as possible. Add to this the compelling narrative, and let's not forget the solid performances of the solid cast, and you know you have gotten a gem here. Robocop 1987 Written by Edward Neumeyer and Michael Miner, Paul Verhoeven's Robocop is set in the future in the dystopic and crime-ridden city of Detroit. The narrative has police officer Alex Murphy getting murdered by a criminal gang that he was pursuing while on duty. The megacorporation Omni Consumer Products, or OCP, subsequently revives him as the cyborg law enforcer Robocop, programmed to serve the public trust, uphold the law, and protect the innocent. But with Robocop eventually learning of OCP's nefarious plans, he turns on his very creators while simultaneously attempting to rediscover his human side. With Robocop, Verhoeven has effectively whipped up a classic sci-fi, giving depth to every character on display. Now, when we say every character, we are also referring to the titular character in the movie. Officer Alex Murphy's eventual transformed appearance as the robotically enhanced law enforcer is a testament to some very convincing and rather impressive practical effects mainly used for the movie. In fact, the special effects team was led by a team consisting of Rob Bettine, Phil Tippett, Craig Davies, Stefan Dupuy, and Bart Mixon, amongst others. Also, the effects were deliberately made to look ultra-violent because the Dutch filmmaker believed that made the scenes appear funnier. The Fly, 1986 if you consider yourself a Cronenberg aficionado, you should know that the filmmaker was quite vocal about his 1986 iconic body horror flick being inspired by George Langelon's 1957 sci-fi horror short story called The Fly and Kurt Newman's 1958 science fiction horror film, also of the same name. Cronenberg's storyline has the brilliant but eccentric scientist Seth Brundle, who hopes to change the world as well as human life with his invention, the teleportation telepods. Tragedy strikes after the experiment Brundle was working on goes horribly wrong, and he starts to mutate into a hideous-looking fly hybrid-like creature. One of the most phenomenal things about this particular David Cronenberg classic here is inevitably the special effects on display, and full credit goes to Academy Award winner Chris Wallace for his outstanding work. Mind you, Brundle's transformation is certainly not for the faint of heart. The initial sores on Brundle's body are only a part of the increasingly grotesque makeup effects featured in the flick, which are followed by his fingernails coming off, and let's not disregard Brundle's sickening way of eating, vomiting digestive enzymes onto his food, and then eating the dissolved remains. Excuse us, we have to hit the washroom right away. Inception 2010 Christopher Nolan's 2010 box office smash stars Leonardo DiCaprio as Cobb, a skilled extractor, or in simpler words, a professional thief, who steals information by infiltrating his target's subconscious via dream-sharing technology. Cobb is wanted for his alleged role in his wife's murder, but then he is given the chance to have his criminal history erased in exchange for performing a nearly impossible task, which is planting thoughts into the subject's dream without having the subject Object, know about it. Believe us when we tell you that this one-of-a-kind, magnificent tour de force had Nolan preferably resorting to practical effects whenever possible. Well, if you know Nolan, the man always prefers to do as much as possible in camera, and if needed, use computer graphics to build on or enhance what has otherwise already been achieved physically. Speaking of the practical effects used in Inception, let's take the instance of the rotating hallway sequence. 
you will be surprised to learn that Nolan actually made the actors perform choreographed fighting scenes while keeping up with the rotation of the set. Add to this the Penrose Stairs, the iconic mountain avalanche, and let's not forget the zero gravity sequences, all of which were created through practical methods for that matter. The Blob, 1988. The Blob happens to be an adrenaline-pumping tale, one that brilliantly fuses elements of horror and science fiction and then gives it the speed and energy of an action movie. A remake of the 1958 classic, also of the same name, the plotline has a slimy, acidic, carnivorous, amoeba-like, ever-growing entity, one that was initially created during the Cold War as part of a biological warfare experiment, crash landing on Earth's surface in a military satellite, and absorb absorbing and disintegrating everything that comes into contact with it. First things first, the special effects in this movie are spectacular, and it is such a relief that not even the slightest form of CGI has been used in the blob. In fact, most of the blob slime was made out of methicel, which, in case you didn't know, happens to be this exceedingly slippery and thickening ingredient used for making milkshakes. So while in the 1958 movie, the blob did feel like a humongous red slimy creature simply pushing people around, the 19 1988 flick did make its titular character look like a terrifying amoeboidal alien with a particular penchant for human flesh, busy burning, melting, and devouring almost everything it touches. From Beyond, 1986 Stuart Gordon's From Beyond, which is loosely based on H.P. Lovecraft's seven-page short horror story, also titled From Beyond, has a rather intriguing storyline. The narrative has obsessive scientist Dr. Edward Pretorius and his assistant, Dr. Crawford Tillinghast, inventing a device known as the Resonator that allows one to perceive creatures from other dimensions. After forces from different dimensions seemingly kill Dr. Pretorius, Dr. Tillinghast is accused of the murder and sent to a psychiatric ward. There, Dr. Tillinghast is put under the supervision of Dr. Catherine McMichaels, who believes that Tillinghast is innocent. McMichaels takes up the case along with Detective Bubba Brownlee, who had earlier investigated the case of the deceased Dr. Pretorius, to solve the mystery, taking the aid of Dr. Tillinghast and rebuilding the resonator. But doing so brings back the dead Dr. Pretorius, who is now at his grotesque best. Special effects artist John Carl Beekler was roped in for the movie, and may we add, Beekler's effects are absolutely praiseworthy. Why else would he be compared to Rob Bettine, especially the latter's work in The Thing, if he wasn't good? One of the high points of the movie has to be Dr. Pretorius coming back from the dead, his flesh all twisted and slimy, and drenched in the color pink from top to bottom. While it is a sheer delight for all the horror fans out there, the scene can still send chills down the spine. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978. Philip Kaufman's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is based on Jack Finney's 1954 novel titled The Body Snatchers, centers on a San Francisco health inspector and his colleague, who, over time, realize that humans are actually being swapped with alien clones that are entirely devoid of emotion. Well, those of you who have seen the movie must clearly remember how the film begins. We are specifically pointing at the opening scene, which is actually a macro photography sequence of alien cells drifting up into the atmosphere of their dead homeworld and then drifting through space until they reach Earth, where the cells are seen descending on the Earth's surface and taking the form of tiny seed pods with pink flowers. All the special effects, including this, were created live for the camera. <laughs> 2001 A Space Odyssey, 1968 Stanley Kubrick's epic sci-fi film, which was inspired by Arthur C. Clarke's 1951 short story known as The Sentinel, amongst other short stories, revolves around an exciting expedition to Jupiter, embarked by astronauts, scientists, and the sentient supercomputer HAL to uncover the origins of an alien monolith. 
Kubrick's 1968 masterpiece is still remembered to this day for its pioneering special effects. You will have to agree with us when we tell you that the fact that every effect was achieved without the benefit of any computer technology for that matter is nothing less than impressive. For instance, how can one not remember the remarkable Stargate sequence? Also, every time you saw the astronauts drifting in space, the illusion was particularly created by hanging stunt performers upside down with the help of wires, which were used to hang from the studio ceiling for hours at a time. <laughs> Alien, 1979 Sir Ridley Scott's Alien, which is backed by a screenplay by Dan O'Bannon, has the crew of a commercial space tug detecting a distress signal from an uncharted planetoid and going there to probe deeper into the matter. But to their complete horror, they soon find themselves up against a highly terrifying and deadly alien set loose aboard the ship. Say hello to the fearsome antagonist, the Xenomorph, who was created with various techniques, but the solitary fact that they were all practical special effects made the Xenomorph appear way more petrifying and scarily effective. Even the Xenomorph eggs, for that matter, were individually crafted, each composed of see-through fiberglass that was filled with jelly. Since Scott wanted the alien larva inside to move, he ended up putting on rubber gloves and wriggling his own fingers in the jelly to develop the desired skin-crawling effect. Remember the infamous facehugger scene that has the facehugger latching onto the helmet of Cain and wrapping itself all over his face? In reality, the thing that initially leaps was actually the intestine of a sheep, and Scott simply had the footage flipped in order to create that startling leaping effect. In fact, when we look at the dissection of the facehugger scene, there's no denying that the creature looks so flashy. To those of you wondering how the look was achieved, the answer is seafood. Scott had the crew bring in a bucket of oysters, clams, and mussels and place them all inside the shell of the dead facehugger prop. Also, full credit goes to the practical effects for making the chest burster scene, which happens to be the most iconic sequence of the movie, appear even more shocking than ever. Last but not least, let's talk about Ash, who is revealed to be an android after one of the characters knocks his head loose. There's a particular scene that has some white liquid coming out of his mouth, and him literally bathed all over in it. That is actually milk, and the organic cord that is seen sticking out of Ash's head is basically made of small, clear marbles and pasta. Who would have thought, right? Videodrome, 1983. Cronenberg's Videodrome centers around Max Wren, the president of a trashy TV channel who is always looking for new content that will make his channel gain more traction and viewers in the process. When Max stumbles upon a plotless TV show that has anonymous victims subjected to torture and the eventual punishment, he makes the blunder of thinking it to be the future of television, one that is capable of redefining entertainment. As a result, Max has the show broadcast on his channel, oblivious to the fact that there is more to the graphic violence on display than meets the eye. Believe us when we tell you that practical effects were key to the success of Videodrome, which is regarded as a cult classic today. Academy Award winner Rick Baker certainly deserves a special mention here for his mind-blowing work on special effects. After all, Baker did resort to a variety of materials, makeup effects, and projections to create effects such as the swelling television screen and the infamous stomach slit sequence, among others. Marvelous Verdict Well, that is all for today, and with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. So, which of the ones do you think has the most amazing practical effects on display? We would love to know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and we hope you have gotten your fill of science fiction for today. Now, if you enjoy this video, you know what to do. Please do leave a thumbs up and stay tuned with us, as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Till then, goodbye, and thanks for watching. Have a nice one.